Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in downtown San Francisco at the RSA conference. 40,000 people, the place is packed. North, south, east, west. I've never seen so many people at Moscone since Oracle Open World, but we're, they're all here helping us keep us safe and we're excited for it. We're all rooting for the good guys. We're excited for our next guest, Couple Reina. He's the VP Product Marketing for Hytrust. Couple, welcome. Hi, thank you, thank you very much. So for people that aren't familiar with Hytrust, give us kind of the quick uh, overview. Sure, uh, sure. Hytrust, uh, we're a company that provides security compliance solutions for multi-workload cloud environments. And what that means is companies that have, say, uh, infrastructure in one data center or two data centers of their own, different geographies, maybe they've moved to the cloud, AWS, uh, Microsoft, et cetera. And what we do is we make it easier for them to provide security, which means protection against data breaches or insider threats, and compliance, being able to prove to an auditor or to their customers that their infrastructure, no matter where it lives, is secure. Right, so the, the cloud world is interesting, right? Yeah. AWS obviously showed that that, that public cloud is good, enterprises are, are happy to adopt yeah. the public cloud. Salesforce show that a cloud-based application SaaS service also works for the enterprise, but then you still have old data centers, you have private data centers, and you have hybrid data centers. And then, oh by the way, a lot of times workloads move between the two. So it's a complicated enough world before you even add over the, the security uh, layer. Yeah, that's a great point. It's really fascinating. When you look back, you would have never thought that the general tenants of your data center, infrastructure, whatever be up for discussion, it is now. What you're seeing is that a CIOs are struggling with is, okay, which cloud provider do I choose, right? Amazon Web Services, great for certain things, but there's also a drawback. Then you have IBM Cloud, you have Google stepping into the game. So I, <clears throat> you have a number of these vendors. Right. Overlay on top of that the geographical concerns. So for example, you have GDPR in Europe, right? Um, and even in the US, you have things like HIPAA and other things that are keep changing. So one is you have the players change on the infrastructure side, you have the regulatory compliance changing on a potentially per country or per region basis, and you have to keep all that secure and compliant while your own admins don't always know necessarily what they're doing, right. because you went from uh, compute, storage, and now network virtualization, everything is an object, and right. everyone can touch anything at any time. But as a CIO or the CISO, you're still responsible for all of that. Right, and then you got all these APIs, so yes. you're, you're tying together a bunch of applications. That's right. You got DevOps, so you're actually pushing out new yes. code many, many times a day, and everybody's working off their iPhone or working out of their home home, yeah. which was part of the, the topic of the keynote today. You know, you yes. have this whole new thread surface called your house, yeah. which increasingly has more connected devices, and you're probably working on your laptop, you know, on the kitchen table now and then. Yeah, you know, High Trust, it's interesting, you know, we have been around for uh, eight plus years uh, developing expertise in the security space, compliance, and infrastructure. And we've seen from, you know, we have some very big federal government customers, some of the biggest banks, retail, healthcare organizations in the world. What we've learned from our customers is that, yes, there is hope, right? I'm so, glad, you're like, the, you're like the first <laughs> optimist we've had on the show. Like, there, oh, there is hope. The bad there guys is definitely are still hope. winning. Okay, good. So, where the hope comes in is, um, not tying your security and compliance needs to your infrastructure. Otherwise, once you change infrastructure, you have to relearn all those tools, all those skills. It could be different people you have to bring in. That itself is an issue. If you can, so if you will, separate your security and compliance uh, needs from your infrastructure. In other words, wherever your workload goes, you pick your public cloud, you pick your private cloud. If you can secure it, you can prove compliance, you're, you're in good shape. And that's what really Hytrust is bringing to the table, saying, as a customer, you know already what your security policy is. Don't do bad stuff, do good stuff, follow the rules. But it gets complicated when you change workloads, change environments, and change people. Right. And so we simplify a lot of that. So and yes, you, there is hope. And you keep saying security and compliance together. Yes. Yet those are two very different challenges Absolutely. that are related, but not the same. So how, you know, how yes. do people prioritize? what? What sometimes maybe falls off the table sure. and doesn't get the attention that it should? Or does one really drive the other? So what's interesting is if you look at, uh, over time for enterprise organizations, the number of individuals and number of departments involved in a particular purchase decision has increased. Why? Because the consolidation of infrastructure, virtualization for example, has now forced security, compliance, and infrastructure all to work together. They have to come together to decide how to do a certain deployment, how to do a certain set of policy changes, 
And so the reason I say that is because they actually have to work together. It's no longer the days where security goes in the corner, chooses some five products, they're happy, compliance sets up a set of rules, they're happy, they all have to work together now. Right. And so in large part, uh, that coming together is happening now. So there is some initial pain point, but the other end of that is you'll have a much more um, streamlined compliance process. Everyone will know what they're supposed to do. There's not this, oh, I got another audit coming. They won't be spending so much money on it. And on the security side, you've actually reduced your attack surface by not relying on um, specific point solutions. You're creating a single policy that gets implemented regardless of the infrastructure. Right, and then you get to see it across geos, across sure. data centers, across, so Absolutely. it's an interesting kind of point of view where you, we've got kind of this state-sponsored uh, stuff going on, Yes. but it's the companies that operate in many countries that in some ways have maybe better visibility into the variety of different types of, of threats. Yeah, and you know, what's interesting is you can look at it at two levels. One, there's obviously a, uh, a policy level, Right, a lot of large customers say, look, um, what can I, even if I'm one of the, you know, we have some of the largest retailers in the world, largest banks in the world, what can I, even as the CEO of these large companies do for, uh, for a state-sponsored attack? And then you have sort of the technology approach, which is, well, I got to do something, right? right? Target right. and all these breaches have showed that regardless of how it happens, you're still responsible at the end of the day for your customer safety. And what our response to that is, look, you can influence policy to a degree, and you should, right? Um, from a technology point of view, be independent of your provider and suppliers. Be able to say, I have a security policy, I have compliance needs, but if I need to, I will switch infrastructure to ensure that both my business runs and my customers are safe. Right. And that ability, that agility, is now only now becoming sort of more mainstream and people are asking for it. So. But it's interesting, one of the topics in the keynote today was, you know, you don't need to employ every single person that's got a booth on the floor. I mean, at some point in time, there's some rationalization on, you know, who are the partners that you choose sure. to go to war with in this, in this fight. And, yeah. and it's, you know, I can see from a CIO perspective, you got to walk around this floor and the other floor at West and North yeah. and just go, oh my gosh, you know, where do I start? Well, it, you know, I'll, I'll layer in one little more complexity. If you're the CIO, this here, this show is one fraction of what you're worried about, which is security. Right, right, right. right? It, it doesn't even get your kudos. You just don't screw it up, right? right? But you're worried about your business. How do I expand in other markets? How do I open up another branch? How do I do it quickly, right? Um, so from, a, from, from that point of view, I think what you'll see here is a lot of consolidation. And the consolidation will happen not just because you have the best technology, but because the company provides, the vendor provides to the CIO both an understanding, how do these pieces fit together? Even if you're a company in the stack, can you explain to the customer where you fit in the stack right, and make right, their life easier? Right. Because if they're already saying, hey, I'm thinking agility like DevOps, you already have to be thinking about how you fit into their environment, not the other way around. All right. Right? All right, couple, I'll give you the last word. What are your priorities for 2017? If we Meet again here a year from today. What are we going to be talking about that, that 2017 was all about? Sure, absolutely. So, uh, HITRUST's main mission really is to simplify this idea of multi-cloud workload security and compliance. And so, our focus in 2017 is to expand that ability across all the public and private clouds and make it much easier. And then from a company point of view, we're heavily involved with various organizations to communicate that knowledge out, to share the learnings that we have out to all of you out there, whether you're at the C-level, the director level, or even if you're a practitioner, um, we're here for you. All right, well nice summary. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. All right, he's Couple, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE from RSA 2017 in downtown San Francisco. Thanks for watching.